children, it's been revealed that she is double vaccinated, and that's been the critical factor in, in uh, sparing South East Queensland from yet another lockdown. Meantime, Queensland police officers are required to have had at least one dose of the vaccination with officers who haven't been stood down on full pay. If you haven't had it, they'll stand you down. There's a legal challenge pending against this policy and it's no surprise that the, the mining magnate Clive Palmer is backing the court action, as you would imagine. There's been a, a major outage this morning affecting WhatsApp, Instagram and Facebook. Some might say lo long may it it stay that way, especially where Twitter is concerned. All sorts of conspiracy theories over what has happened, but uh, the tech giants have worked overtime to get it up and running again. Hundreds of thousands of doses of uh, pill, which uh, helped to halve COVID hospital admission rates, are headed now for Australia. The Morrison government has uh, finalised a deal with Merck, uh, Sharp and Dome to acquire the drug as a first-line treatment. Uh, which is obviously a very good idea, given it's proven to be satisfactory in some areas already. Do you think I can turn a page here? No way. Uh, got it now. Pages were stuck together. Uh, it's now become much clearer, incidentally, as the nation gets back on track near its original vaccination timelines, that Australia is, uh, is going to be in a very, very good position as we emerge from these COVID lockdowns on the east coast. Uh, a man is recovering from a serious samurai sword attack during an early morning home invasion at Mount Druid in Sydney's west yesterday. A 46-year-old man has suffered a wound to the head in the attack. Four men fleeing the property. Uh, in sport in the NRL, Penrith's uh, Nathan Cleary is facing six months on the sidelines after the full extent of his shoulder injury was revealed in the aftermath of the Panthers grand final win. Tough on him, very tough on him. Uh, you know, they resemble the walking wounded, but the, the best defense in the, in the league held up precisely when it was needed, giving Penrith a 14-12 grand final win over South. An attempted sideline conversion from Adam Reynolds could have leveled the, uh, the scores with minutes uh, remaining, but it wasn't to be. For the Bunnies, Penrith crowned the NRL premiers in uh, tennis, ATP officials are investigating domestic abuse allegations against German star Alex Zverev. Uh, the claims date back some months and they do remain under investigation. And Australia's women cricketers are now preparing to play three one-day matches against India after their test match on the Gold Coast was ruined by rain. And uh, as you know, that ended up in a draw. And Victoria has just broken a record that nobody wanted to break. Not only is it the longest lockdown place on the planet, but Victoria has now recorded 1,763 new cases, an Australian record, a record they didn't want. Anyway, they've tried everything. I feel very sorry for the Victorians. They have tried, but they've failed. Awaken your unbreakable in a new Toyota Hilux with new stock arriving regularly at Bar Track Toyota in Tully. Yep, Bar Track Tully has Hilux 4x4 dual cabs arriving regularly. So get in now and talk to the team about the model you want. Whether you're after the Hilux SR 2.8 litre turbo diesel and SR5 with brake towing capacity of 3,500 kg, or want the best with the top of the range Rugged X, you need to get into Bar Track Tully now and put your name on one. Is it time to renew your insurance policy? Rather than simply renewing your current insurance, take the time to consider what you really need. Tony, Vicky and Renee at Elders Insurance Innisfail, with more than 50 years combined local insurance experience, are ready to work with you to find the right cover. Elders Insurance Innisfail, your local experienced team at 44 Rankin Street, servicing the Cassowary Coast from Cardwell to Derail. For an authorised representative of Elders Insurance underwriting agency, PTY LTD. Elders Insurance underwritten by QBE Insurance Australia LTD. It's on again. Grab the family, head to Babinda and join in the festivities for the 2021 Babinda.
Winter Harvest Festival, Saturday the 9th of October. This year's theme is Under the Sea. There will be shop displays and market stalls, as well as a grand street parade and live entertainment. Don't miss the tractor pull and vintage machinery display, as well as the spectacular fireworks. There's so much to see and do, and there's something for everyone at this year's Babinda Harvest Festival, 9th of October 2021. Don't miss out. Have you been stung too many times when buying pool chemicals? Left the pool shop with no idea what chemicals you've actually bought and no knowledge what they're even for? Turtles Pool and Spa Technologies experienced pool technicians can help you out by showing you how to maintain your pool efficiently with an easy-to-use tailored program. Servicing the Cassowary Coast region, Turtles Pool and Spa Technologies sell and service all brands of pool equipment. Google Turtles Pool and Spa Technologies as they work on all pools. Who doesn't love a delicious Italian meal? Ravioli, lasagna and everyone's favourite spaghetti. Mmm. Now have it in your own home. Mary's Pasta and Fine Food Store. Just down the highway in Morphe. A great range of pastas and sauces ready for you to dish up that Italian feast. While you're there, grab a barista coffee and check out the array of meats and cheeses. Or try their made-to-order deli sandwiches like the Godfather. You will be amazed. Savour the Italian flavours. Drop it to Mary's Pasta and Fine Foods, just off the highway at Moresby. Have you heard about Innisfail's new hair and beauty salon, Talked About Hair and Beauty? Casey at Talked About Hair and Beauty has 13 years experience as a hairstylist, plus her beauty services include black magic spray tanning for a natural look, facial waxing, eyelash lift and tint, eyebrow tint and brow lamination for guys and girls. Check out Talked About Hair and Beauty on Facebook, through Google or pop into the new salon, Shop 2, 121 Edith Street, Innisfail, just down from Rebel Coffee. Okay. Give us a call, tell us what's on your mind, one 300 564 It's been a remarkable few days in the history of New South Wales politics with the uh, Rajiklian Barilaro government dramatically coming to an end and within the space of just a few days, the New South Wales Premier, Gladys Berejiklian, has been cut down in the prime of her career, which I think is very sad, and at the height of her popularity, and all because of one sternly worded press release from the Independent Commission Against Corruption. All because of that. I know some people are saying that uh, she obviously knows more about what the ICAC has uh, than we possibly do. I, I suppose that's right, but regardless of any of that, even if you were confident they had nothing, it's virtually impossible to dig in against that kind of backdrop. It is. The media would uh, ultimately hound you out of office, and if you didn't go willingly... In fact, uh, there have been reports over the weekend that... Uh, Gladys Berejiklian had sought legal advice in terms of her prospects of standing aside for a period of time. But uh, as she noted, the corruption watchdog moves at a glacial-like pace, and it does. They are so slow. It's now almost a year since she was forced to reveal her relationship with the former Liberal MP for Wagga, Daryl Maguire. <coughs> Excuse me. And yet uh, nothing has progressed much beyond that, has it? I mean, if she tried to cut it out and stay there, decided just she was going to stay there, there was a very real prospect that the final report could have been dropped in the run up to the March 2023 election, <coughs> which wouldn't have done much good at all. The new round of hearings in just over a week's time have got some pretty punch now that uh, Ms Berejiklian will no longer be the Premier. So really anything could happen. Transport Minister Andrew Constance has confirmed that he'll quit the Parliament in a bid to contest the seat of Gilmore in the Federal Parliament. And, uh, well, that's been on the cards for some time. And uh, then came yesterday's bombshell, completely out of the blue, I might say, that the New South Wales Deputy Premier, John Barilaro, was calling it a day as well, saying that he'd run out of energy. Very nice man, John Barilaro, and a very effective man. He's done well in the time that he's been there. It can be pretty easy to, to gloss over the, the toll that politics takes on individuals. You know, he's, uh, he's launched a high-profile defamation case against a supposed comedian on YouTube and says he's a better place to run that case as an individual than as the Deputy Premier. Well, he's got to think about himself, and he has. I mean, we've seen the pitfalls of defamation cases with Christian Porter and Ben Robert Smith you know, even the person trying to clear their name. It can be a very stressful, it can be, and also a very time-consuming and also a very expensive business. You have threat or demand that the Premier should dismantle. 
North Korea made it clear that they want peace and they want um, detente. But at the same time, they wanted to show that they have sufficient weapons and sufficient, sufficient military power to kind of uh, lead the, the, the negotiation rather than to be led or rather than to be pushed around. So that's the double kind of uh, signal. They say, okay, we'll reconnect the communication line, but at the same time, they fired some missiles. Okay, thank you very much for your analysis tonight. That was Professor Ki Chang Kim from Korea University. This is World Today. Stay tuned. Dive into the sports world with Sideline Story. Our weekly podcast that brings you the most up-to-date game analysis and news from the latest sports action. Subscribe to Sideline Story on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and wherever you listen to your podcast. You are listening to World Today. Konstantin Shepin is a Russian employee with China Media Group. He is one of the laureates of the 2020 and 2021 Chinese government's Friendship Awards. The award is in recognition of his role in enhancing mutual understanding between Russia and China. Established in 1991, the Friendship Award is China's highest award for foreign nationals who have made outstanding contributions to China. Shaping is now joining us here in the Beijing studio. Good evening. Evening. Very nice to be here. First of all, congratulations indeed. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Frankly speaking, from the deep of your heart, do you think you deserve this? I, I, I don't know. Uh, honestly, I'm not the one to judge. Uh, I'm the guy who likes to sit in the corner and uh, write an articles or running around taking the interviews so it's uh, basically for the audience to judge <laughs> probably for the government so uh, I'm seriously <laughs> not the one to judge basically if, if people are happy about me but, but, yeah. okay okay so talking about whether people are happy about you um, out of curiosity do you have uh, fans uh, here in China or in your home country, for example, for do you have Russian fans who believe, who think, okay, if I want to know what is going on in China, then Konstantin Shaping is the guy I should have turned to. I just need to take a look at what he is saying or reporting these days. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> no, I, can, uh, I can say that. I never, uh, I never tried to be a big brother for the audience, you know, especially for the Russian audience. Uh, I do uh, no. Uh, I do have some subscribers uh, on my blog. Uh, I do have people uh, who are actually uh, even sometimes calling me back from the Russian media for uh, taking some comments uh, as the expert. You know, uh, because uh, you know, working for Chinese media opens up another door, and you then uh, you discover the other side of. Uh, China. Mm. But the interesting thing is not about the Russian audience. The <laughs> interesting thing is about Chinese audience. Oh. Uh, because uh, we're still making the podcasts and, you know, sometimes they do recognize my voice. <laughs> it was very fun uh, uh, like last year at uh, the China Input Expo. Mm. There were a lot of young volunteers uh, learning Russian and they basically approached me and uh, saying, dude, uh, I'm constantly shaping, and and I'm like, oh, no, no, I don't even have the badge yet. <laughs> and I say, we do recognize your voice. So, um, basically, making this job is not only telling Chinese stories to the Russian audience. It's also very useful to the Chinese audience because, as far as I know, today more than thirty thousand people learn Russian in China. Mm. And the post podcast will make it here. As we join China to celebrate this woman you think or each thing go to the Chinese Somali Fajan Dong Fahila Kwanjin to you. You know Liang Bo Chi Chinjin Bu Yi the Fisu Twenty Yuzo, Yisofu Liang Bo Yen. Malaysia by Jafu Chang, Sai Fu Ding. Since the outbreak of COVID-19 
国际社会各界人士连日来也热烈祝贺中华人民共和国成立七十二周年。俄罗斯共产党中央委员会副主席莫雷科夫。中国人民在中国共产党的领导下，创造了经济、科技、社会等各个领域的发展奇迹。衷心祝福中国人民从中繁荣，相信俄中人民携手努力，未来一定能取得更大的成就。阿联酋迪拜联通研究中心高级研究员梅里姆·普拉西米。中国共产党的伟大之处在于，始终为人民着想，不断完善自身。“一带一路”建设等中国在国内外开展的一系列项目，不仅促进了中国经济发展，也为各国带来了大量的合作机会。我祝福中国人民国庆节快乐，祝福中国。土耳其中国友好基金会主席哈桑。衷心祝贺中华人民共和国成立七十二周年。七十二年来，中国取得的成就令人钦佩。纵使新冠疫情隔离了彼此，我们的心仍连在一起。在这个历史性时刻，我祝愿中国人民幸福安康。最后，景天国际新闻国际讲述：世界卫生组织公布的最新数据显示，全球新冠肺炎确诊病例较前一天增加二十五万七千一百二十二例，达到两亿三千四百八十万九千一百零三例；死亡病例增加四千二百零四例，达到四百八十万零三百七十五例。根据美国约翰斯霍普金斯大学的统计，截至北京时间今晨五点二十一分，美国累计新冠肺炎确诊病例四千三百八十二万两千五百五十二例，死亡七十万三千一百三十例。过去二十四小时新增确诊病例十四万三千二百例，新增死亡病例一千九百七十三例。Thank you very much, Mark Fowler of Hobson Wealth Partners. In other business news, specialty dairy company Sinlay Milk is to start selling its own branded milk in a stainless stainless steel bottle. The Sinlay Swapper bottle is the company's first consumer product under its own brand, although Steer Works and Talbot Farm subsidiaries produce a range of products. The company has been working since 2017 on its own branded products as a way to diversify from from its reliance. On infant formula for its global global customer, A2 Milk, and we'll bring you a wrap of the day's news and numbers and checkpoint after the 5:30 news. But for now, Marnie, that is business. Kia ora, Anand. Time for sport now with Barry Guy and Barry Disclaimer. I am not a fan of cricket, and I don't really understand. Oh, and there's a lot coming up too. There is a lot. So, please, great. It, tell me. <laughs> What's Devin Conway up to? At least I know that part. Uh, yes, well, uh, the black cap, uh, Devin Conway, is uh, wishing he'd spent more time brushing up on his wicket keeping ahead of uh, the T20 World Cup, which is coming up, Marnie. Conway has left uh, New Zealand for the UAE for the tournament, which starts later this month. He had the wicket keeping duties for three New Zealand T20 games last summer. Conway will spend six days in in room isolation before linking up with the squad and getting into training. I haven't done heaps of work with the gloves recently due to the finger injury that I had. I wish I'd done a little bit more recently, but um, it's allowed me that chance just to get that finger fully recovered. And then um, once I get out of isolation, I'll certainly be doing some keeping drills alongside Luke Bronkey and some some Sarfit. The All Blacks will welcome back four senior players for their northern tour, but they're preparing to be without star halfback Aaron Smith. Sam Kane, Sam Whitelock, Dane Coles, and Shannon Frizzell will join the squad in the U.S. ahead of their match in Washington D.C. After missing the rugby championship due to injuries and personal reasons, Foster says Smith. Uh, that、uh, coach Ian Foster says Smith, who has been playing for Manawatu in the NPC, will remain in New Zealand for the birth of his second child. We have resigned to playing without him, and so I find it very hard to see a way for him to come over. But、um, you know, you never say never nowadays. Veteran boxing commentator Bob Sheridan is retiring because of ill health. The 77-year-old American has broadcast thousands of fights on radio and television, including the Rumble in the Jungle between Muhammad Ali and George Foreman in Zaire in 1974, and the Thriller in Manila between Joe Frazier and Ali in 1975. And Paul Cole has been beaten by Mustafa Asal of Egypt in the quarterfinals of the U.S. Open in Philadelphia. Going on a tour on the Hakinikina. Kia ora, Barry. It is half past twelve. You're listening to Te Pūrongo Te Pūtūtanga on RNZ National.
Yeah, yeah, honey, I can I? A review into electoral law will consider the voting age and length of the parliamentary term. A report finds regenerative agriculture is growing rapidly. And later in World Watch, more on the major outages in the tech world. But first, here are our top stories with Nicola Rice. A trial date has been set for the South African mother of three charged with killing her daughters in Timaru. Lauren Dickerson is accused of murdering twin daughters Maya and Carla, who were two, and their six-year-old sister Liane. Our reporter at the hearing this morning in Timaru told Midday Report the community continues to be shaken by what's happened, with visible signs of support such as a vigil attended by over 300 people. The Justice Minister says any major changes to electoral laws are likely to be decided at a public referendum. A review will consider the voting age, overseas voting and the length of the parliamentary term. The Minister Chris Farfoy says some changes, such as transparency of political funding and Māori voters' ability to switch from the Māori role to the general role, could be in place before 2023. Capacity has been boosted at COVID-19 testing sites in Hamilton so health workers can swab dozens of people who were waiting as early as 5 o'clock this morning. Waikato District Health Board admits it wasn't equipped for the huge demand yesterday which saw people sitting for hours in their car all being turned away. Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp are at least partially reconnected to the global internet after a nearly six-hour shutdown. No reason's been given yet. Analysts suspect it was human error within the platform. Facebook has taken a hammering on the stock market. A 19-year-old man charged with threatening to kill non-Muslims will keep his name suppressed for now and remains in custody. The interim name suppression order was granted in North Shore District Court after an application by both the police and defence counsel. The man's charged with threatening to kill members of the Auckland community who were non-Muslims between July the 13th and September the 7th. He was arrested six days after the Lynn Mall terror attack. That's the news. After 1pm, when nature breaks the law, science journalist Mary Roach looks at the inevitable clashes between nature and humans and the ways that communities all over the world are trying to protect people and animals when our worlds collide. Then it's the panel of the Chapman, and today I'm with Jock Anderson and Victoria McClellan. All that from 1 to 5 on RNZ National. The long range forecast now for all our Bear or New Zealand delivery Saturday with a The situation that Trump constantly continues to 